Hello and welcome back to Banner Page 2.1. If you'd like to check out the mod, there is a link in the description. And uh, we're actually up against a band of brigands at the moment. And uh, you see me with my new sword today as well. I've actually just had enough money to be able to afford it. It was about 3,400 at, um, I believe it was River Chegg's Marketplace. And, uh, well, I've been doing pretty well so far. I actually bought a blunt weapon. I've now sold it because I think I have enough in the salt mine to be able to um, kind of uh, give ourselves a little bit of an advantage here and there in terms of our the economy. Now, of course, do bear in mind that I am not fully set yet. And I actually think that I had a, a good weapon in the previous episode, but I think I mistakenly sold it when I bought the blunt weapon because obviously I replaced my one-handed with the winged mace that I purchased and uh, it was really good for us it was really really good I was able to go I'll actually show you after this um, the specific area that I went to to try and capture as many prisoners as I could get my hands on obviously traveling back and forth between my hideout and that place netted me a pretty significant amount of opportunities and I'm talking about various bandit parties um, various uh, other things and unfortunately no tournaments I, feel, I personally feel like tournaments are really difficult so generally I tend not to do those at least as I am at the moment because as I am at the moment I really have very low weapon proficiencies and I personally feel like it's going to be way too difficult for me to um, achieve anything significant in those situations unfortunately I might get killed here no never mind nice nice kill by that fellow unfortunately i haven't really leveled up my archery that much because as i say i've just literally been attempting to take prisoners as much as i can i actually do have a couple of slave um slave units i, I can't remember which ones we have there we go slave driver slave hunter those guys have been really good also the slaver chief they've been really really good in taking prisoners for me um i don't think i'm going to capture that many things right here i'm not going to rescue anything right now i'm just going to get the uh, the caravan guard i suppose but it now prevents me from going into my um into my hideout so it kind of makes me think that i should just leave the caravan guard where he is for the moment now what i also have is a new companion we have mr beheshter who has joined us and I'm actually very pleased to mention him because he is uh, definitely someone that will hopefully be able to give us maybe a, a boost. In uh, He's actually not a Pathfinder, never mind. I'm thinking of um, Borcha, I think. Yes, I'm thinking of Borcha because he's also a... Um, uh, he's a he's a pathfinding guy. He this guy does have twelve intelligence though, so I think he could probably be made into a pathfinding specialist if we wanted him to do that. Of course, he ha already has three in power draw, weapon master, and horse archery, which is pretty significant for what we want him to be. So that's pretty good because we are going to want him to be a horse archer, of course. So I do need to try and find him a bow and stuff like that because I haven't really uh, outfitted him in anything except a one-handed and a shield because that's generally the most reliable setup for companions there is because obviously apart from equipping them with a crossbow, having defenses is really important. And now we have another battle on our hands against some sea raiders. I'm very much hoping that we'll be able to take a couple of them prisoner this time. Obviously not me specifically, but most of my um, cavalry units do have blunt weapons equipped. And they're actually very good at using them. I haven't really been using a blunt weapon for the last couple of battles off screen as well. And it seems like they're able to at least take three to four prisoners per battle. And I hope that it will be the case this time as well. Obviously, you do have to remember that this is Warband and not Bannerlord. Because Bannerlord is uh, very much a case of a lot of units are going to get taken prisoner. A lot of people are going to get knocked unconscious. And uh, you're going to be able to, well, fill up on prisoners very, very quickly. However, uh, Warband, it is very much due to blunt weapons being king when it comes to taking prisoners unless the mod changes that of course i'm unsure whether banner page actually does that where blunt weapons do have a chance to uh, land a land a lethal blow it might very well be the case that that is implemented in this as well because i seem to remember that there was another one that also did that so it might be it might be I, i'm not entirely sure but what i've seen so far is that slaver units and anyone that's equipped with a blunt weapon is usually getting them knocked unconscious and you can see here there you go three 
that is perfectly fine with me. And we're going to be able to take them prisoner. Now, I'm going to show you the whole transportation mechanic. Oh, look at this. We actually gained two slave crushers. Nice. I didn't even realize that these were in the uh, in the uh, the prisoner's hold for that Sea Raider party. But that's very, very useful. You know what I'm actually going to do? I'm going to move these guys to the top. I kind of don't want them to be at the top. That was the main reason why I was kind of running around with them not there because I don't really want them to die. You know, if we're up against a hard enemy, I really don't want them to be at the front line because they're more than likely going to die. We've lost one of them already, which is pretty significant loss. So it would be nice to try and prevent that. Obviously, that was the main reason. But otherwise, uh, I'm just going to take these and take these pieces of loot. That's exactly what I've been doing. I've just been taking loot, fighting things, and uh, things have been going uh, relatively well, not not too badly. And we're going to go into the hidden base here. All right, here we go. Assembly hall, and uh, we can recruit some more troops if we want to. I've actually increased my leadership skill a little bit as well. I think I have two in leadership now. So, um, you know, it might help us in the future to, um, you know, if we if we need to get like a big big army going well, well I say big but I only have like a maximum capacity of like 54 or 55 or something like that so it's not that massive but you know it's okay it will it will do the job hopefully for us at least if we get into a larger battle against a vassal or something like that anyway as you can see this is the option can you transport all my prisoners it's going to cost 30 dinars per slave personally I think that's a, a decent price I think in general um I think they I think each prisoner gives you 10, isn't it? Yeah, I think each prisoner gives you 10 dinars per week. So you're paying triple the price to transport them down. But if you're far away, like I am, that is probably going to be worth it for you, in my opinion. So anyway, this is the smuggler guy. And personally, I feel like he is really, really nice. I might actually buy this. I'm not entirely sure whether I really want to spend 1300 on it. But could be useful could be useful. This is the sword that I'm currently using as well, by the way. I personally feel like this sword is great. The thrusting attack has saved me a few times, actually, going up against uh, some sea raiders that are much more heavily armored than you would otherwise imagine. Uh, you know, the thrusting attack can really do a good amount of damage. And I think that Banner Page has actually made the animation of the thrust with the sword into a much uh, quicker animation. So it's not as clumsy to use, which I think is very nice. I like that a lot because usually I'm pretty awful with, uh, you know, combat in general. So any kind of uh, assistance I can get in that regard is going to be very nice. All right, so nothing to do here with the slaver. Who's this guy? Oh, yes, the recruiter, yeah. Well, what we could do is we could do a tournament or um, I actually, I, I do want to show you that one thing. I actually want to show you where I was going to fight a bunch of units. Here, right here. Not, not eliminating the camp, because you don't want to eliminate the camp if you can help it. Because if you do that, it's going to significantly reduce the presence of that kind of bandit in the area. And I have about 60 or so prisoners in the salt mine here. Now, I was around here. I went this way, pretty much, just like this along the coast, right down there. And I would literally just go get 10 guys, might go to the salt mine myself. Really just depends, because obviously what I would like to do is try to get as many prisoners as possible along the way. And there are sea raiders and brigand parties that are very lucrative to fight as well. I uh, I think I, I fought a brigand party that actually gave us a uh, cataphract prisoner. And I think that cataphract prisoner, if I decided to sell him, would be very significant in terms of his uh, money gain. So it would be um, very advantageous for us to do that. I would actually like to speak to the Guildmaster just in case there's a Sea Raider hideout or something like that. Or actually, wait a minute. I think that's Boyar Mariga that I'd have to speak to, isn't it? So probably not the Guildmaster, but let's actually just speak to him nevertheless. Maybe he'll actually have a task for us or something. Uh, attacked by Routiers. Okay, yes, that's never going to happen, is it? I'll do it, though. I'll do it and see what happens. I don't think I'm going to be able to, to be honest. I think Routiers are actually quite uh, quite good. I think they are quite good, so it might end up in our destruction. 
Well, here we go. I actually didn't uh, take too long to find them. I basically went in the opposite direction of the uh, potential Sea Raider hideout because, let's face it, any time I go to the left, I never find the bandits. So I think to myself, okay, I'll go right then. And it seems like that has resulted in uh, a little bit extra success than we would have otherwise been um, able to gain. So I'm pretty happy with this. Unfortunately, I don't have a shield, so I am going to get murdered pretty heavily by anyone that wants to shoot me in the face. Like, for example, that guy. He completely murdered me. So there you go. But I'm, I'm pretty confident that my units should be able to deal with this even if uh, I'm unable to command them, because unfortunately I'm not able to command them when I am indeed dead. So we are losing a Sea Raider here and a Slaver Chief. Bear in mind they do have Freelancer Knights, and those Freelancer Knights are going to be very difficult for us to deal with, or at least I hope not, maybe? But, oh wait, wait, did we, did we knock some unconscious? If we, could, if we could knock some of those Freelancer Knights unconscious, I'm just going to sell them straight up, because any Knight-based unit is going to be insane to sell. They're going to be like, what, 500? No, there we go. We, we just kill them. But they're going to be like 500, aren't they? Or something like that. They're probably going to be very expensive to sell to our ransom broker, which would be very nice. But unfortunately, that is not the case here, I don't think. Um, but there you go. Uh, I think we actually did do the quest, I think. Oh, we did wound one of them. We, oh, we wounded a mounted crossbowman, which is, I think is pretty good. So we'll just take that. And we'll take a caravan guard, even though I'm not really uh, interested in the carav caravan guard line, to be honest. I'd much rather recruit some other kinds of units, for example, um, Sea Raider bandits or something like that. That would probably be the greatest idea. Um, yeah, we do need to upgrade their horses, don't we? Yes, we do need to upgrade their horses. So let's see what I can actually do about that so let's go and speak to Beheshta real quick because he doesn't have a horse at the moment so they he can't okay i guess i'll just give him my old one i thought he had three in riding skill does he not have three no he has two in riding oh okay okay well not a problem Beheshta not a problem all right well let's go back to um the to the guild master because uh obviously in uh in uh, warband you do have to go back to the quest giver to hand it in but thankfully because it's banner page and because generally quite a few warband mods give you the shortcut to speak to the guild master it's easy oh yeah there you go nice good amount of experience three renown and a thousand dinars and we've also improved our relation with the town which i'm not entirely sure what that's really going to do i suppose we could buy a productive enterprise here and let's have a look at how much this would actually give us this is pretty decent now here's the thing you have a multitude of different options with making money in banner page making money is pretty much the number one thing that you m might want to do and might want to spend your time doing because with money comes power directly because you can basically go and you can recruit units as long as you have the cash you can buy gear as long as you have the cash and it really helps a great deal to have as much as you could want obviously if you have too much then that's not really that good either so you don't really want to be a millionaire in the game because that's not really going to give you anything eventually you're going to have everything that you want and you're going to have an overabundance of cash so just having enough that is going to allow you to cover all costs that's going to be very important. And you also have to, of course, balance the amount of investment that you make as well. Because if you're spending 10,000 dinars, you've got to think, well, 700 dinars per week, that's going to take a long time to get that money back. However, if the investment you think is worth it and you have a spare amount of cash, so let's say you have 15,000 or something like that, I think spending 10,000 of that to gain 700 a week, I think that's pretty good. However, if you want to, I, I'd probably recommend taking prisoners instead and putting them into the prisoner's hold. Ah, who's this? Putting them into the prisoner's hold at the salt mine, I was about to say. That is a very good idea, in my opinion, because they give you 10 dinars per, um, uh, per prisoner, and you can put in a whole bunch. I, I think that there's a, a limit of, uh, isn't it like a hundred or something like that in there now or something 
along those lines. Because I, I think in a previous version of Banner Page, there wasn't a limit. And so people would basically put in 500 and get 5,000 per week, which obviously is extremely, extremely lucrative, uh, but maybe a little bit too powerful. So I think there was a limit imposed. I'm not entirely sure what it was, but um, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's like 100 or 200 or something like that, which I think is good. I think that's a nice, that's a nice limit on it. Now, if you want to, and I'm going to say here, this is probably one of the greatest weapons you can possibly use. If you haven't already checked out my previous series of Banner Page where I play Iron Man Challenge, which basically means that I can't die even once, which I probably, I, I've, I've actually failed it twice in this series so far if I was actually doing the Iron Man Challenge, but I would have been you know, much more careful in that case. But anyway, this is one of the weapons that I used in that series, and I was a thrown weapon specialist, and it is so good. Oh, these are so good. I cannot recommend these enough. They are super fun to use, easy to use, especially for me, and they do blunt damage as well. So you can take absolutely everyone that you want prisoner. And then if you don't want to take them prisoner, you can use these instead, which are harpoons, and they do piercing damage. So they do so much damage. It's crazy. So yeah, if you wanted to, you could, of course, do that as well. Just the, the amount of choice is just absolutely insane. And uh, the amount of weapon choice I'm talking about here as well, because the weapon choice is very, very important, especially in an RPG game as well. You know, anyway, let's uh, RPG game. Uh -huh. Yes, how redundant. I said I just said role playing game game. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Fantastic. OK, so um, I'm thinking, you know what I'd like to do? I think what I'd like to do is actually um, disband some of these units that I have here because I won't be able to go into my hideout with more than 40 units. And while I would like to take more and more units, it's going to be very difficult for me to do that, just purely for the fact that I need to transport prisoners over to the salt mine. And obviously, I would like to get more bandits to level them up so that we can become more powerful and things like that. But it's going to be difficult to do that as it stands. So I'm just going to level up um, Beheshta's strength. I'm going to get him some archery, one-handed weapon proficiency, and all that stuff. Mattel has also leveled up, which is really good, because then we can get her another point in strength, another point in iron flesh, and a little bit more in one-handed. And, of course, the legend himself has advanced. So we're going to get another point in charisma, and I will get another point in leadership. And now I'm thinking what we're going to do is we'll probably level up our two-handed weapon proficiency because that's what I've been wanting to do for quite a while. And uh, we might very well end up using a two-handed in the end uh, because I am using two different quivers. Now, you may be wondering why I'm not raiding any villages. Well, um, unfortunately, the... Uh, where, where, where do I see that? There we go. Unfortunately, the Vagias are at peace with everyone. And the Nords are also at peace with everyone, and the Rodox are also at peace. The Saranids and the Swadians are at war against each other, which is... Oh, they're actually... I, oh, no, never mind. They're actually at war against the Kurgits. Oh, that is hilarious. Okay, so the Kurgits are getting absolutely beasted by everyone, by the looks of things. So what is actually happening here? Not much. They don't seem to be able to take anything. It seems like the Swadians have encroached a little bit on the Kurgits' territory, but that's pretty much all. And I have been... Well, I have been playing the game quite a bit off screen, and you can see here, 640 dinars. That's pretty good. I wouldn't say that that is amazing, of course, um, but, you know, I can always get more prisoners and always put them into the, the salt mine as much as I possibly can. And we have 5,200 dinars now, so what I can do is I can reinvest that into land ownership in... River check. I can also gain 1900 from my land there as well. So look at this. I can actually buy another six acres if I want to. I'm actually going to buy another five for 5,700. I know that some people say that this is extremely inefficient. Buying land is inefficient, according to some people. I would disagree, mainly because you can buy so much of it in each town. So let's just say that you're going to spend a huge amount of time in the Vagia territory, which of course we are, you know, we are spending a, a lot of time here. And uh, I, I, another good way, by the way, of getting some cash quickly is just by stealing cattle from nearby villages. And you can do that very easily, as I'll demonstrate now. But the point is, generally, if you are going to be spending time in any kind of territory whatsoever. I think buying land is really 
really useful. Anyway, there we go. We're going to try and do this. I need to level up my looting skill. One? Are you serious, Barney? Are you serious? Come on now. Just one? Wow. Yeah, yeah wow. That's, that's, that's really bad. That is really bad. But we did get some fresh beef from it, I suppose. And I'm going to continue moving throughout the... Uh, the villages here because of course I don't need these villages they can hate me as much as they want because I do not need to recruit from them at all so we're gonna be uh, getting some more here you know if I had known that I was gonna be doing a lot of raiding and indeed stealing things I would have probably specced more into looting I thought I was gonna be more of a, a sort of a horse archer a horse archer type character which we are of course but I thought if I was going to be doing more raiding, I probably would have given myself more looting skill initially because that generally is a good way to go, especially considering if you are, you know, planning on doing a lot of, well, unsavory deeds. Yes, a lot of unsavory deeds. But yeah, uh, in the entire time that I've been playing um, off screen, there have been no war declarations whatsoever against the Vagias and... That's kind of strange. That's kind of strange to me. I'm not entirely sure what's going on with that, but I would assume it's just literally because uh, no one wants to pick a, pick a fight with them at the moment. They might actually be quite strong, according to the AI. So it might very well be the case that they're going to take a little bit longer to uh, decide who they want to attack and so on and so forth. So I am waiting with bated breath about that. And as you can see, stealing cattle is extremely easy. Very very risk-free as well. It's very risk-free. You can pretty much just do it anytime you want. And it's actually a really good way of getting cash initially in the game as well if you don't really care too much about uh, your relation with villages. Obviously in native, you probably want to do that at a far away place so that you're not going to be affected uh, so much by the village. Um, being, you know, hating you you're purely, you know, that's that's basically what that is. Anyway, um, I guess that's actually going to be it for this episode. I would like to have actually raided a village and maybe done a couple of vassal battles, but as I've said, I can't really do much about that unless I attack a vassal myself, and I don't know whether I'm confident enough to be able to win that without having some assistance. So I'm going to wait a little bit longer off screen, see what happens with the war declarations, and hopefully I'll see you then. So, I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.